Hello friends! Welcome back to another 18th century Scarlet Witch sewing vlog. This week my plan initially was to hand sew everything at night and work on the mock-up for the jacket during the day. Today I'm starting the hand sewing of the trim and then hopefully I will also be starting sequining and adding the embellishments to the trim that I really want to add. I'm going to do that on camera today. I'm going to try to walk you through step by step how I do this and do some troubleshooting of like, what do I want these sequins to look like? That will take until it takes. So if I vlog it tomorrow and Sunday as well, that's the content for this week. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping basically once I kind of see how these things are played out, I'll figure out what I want to do and then just go to town on doing it and then get around to the mock-up for the jacket later. But also there's a really important step between the mock-up and the actual, the nothingness. It's getting the pattern. So I have Patterns of Fashions 1 by Janet Arnold and I plan to use the writing habit coat pattern that is in that book. I have to take it out of that book and like make it exist into the air, right? Basically. So I think what I'm going to try to do for that is actually using my DSLR, photograph the each like individual piece or as many of the pieces as I can, bring it into Adobe Illustrate with a grid on, line up the grid so that I have like a one inch by one inch thing. And then from there, print the size that it's in. I know that it's not exactly my size, so I know that I'll have to resize it. I am slightly concerned about printing that many sheets of paper, but I'm also not 100% sure another way to do it besides just plotting dots, which is the way I've done it before. So I can do that and I have grid paper for the pattern, but essentially, we need to make the pattern exist on my, on like actually exist versus in a book. And that's most likely what this vlog will cover is the process of taking it out of the book and making it on my table. I have some goodies to open. So I've purchased a little bit more fabric for this project and some other things for this project that I'd like to share with you, but I've also purchased swatches for a Halloween costume. And I know last week's vlog, I was like, y'all, I really want to start thinking about my Halloween costume. So I purchased swatches and we're going to open those. So let's get to it. Okay. So this first one is from Silk Baron and this should be my uh, two yards of fabric that I ordered for the coat. Yes. Look at it. <gasps> We got some, we got some swatches for a potential, ooh, look at these. Uh, I, one of these other packages will have the fabric that will give it away on what my Halloween costume is potentially. I did not know they had this. So this is what I am, well, I, yeah. So here's some greens. I'm just gonna leave it there when you see me open the other one. It, it might give away what, I, what I've got in my heads. This is so pretty, look at this. And this, I love this, oh, ooh. And then I didn't know they had one called Arsenic. So I was just watching Christine McConnell's video on her new wallpaper. And she mentioned that the, not new wallpaper, she took away wallpaper on her, I'm going to link it actually in the cards. She took off, she redid the wallpaper to be the original wallpaper that the house came with. And she talks about how it, they used to use arsenic in the wallpaper, in the paint for the wallpaper. Then um, Jedi Manda sent me down another rabbit hole on this arsenic and wallpaper thing. And I'll link this other video by history something, but they talk about arsenic. And then the guy in the video, the second video, opens up a book of wallpaper, like templates or whatever. And I just spit all over this. <laughs> he opens up this book that has this paper in it and is talking about it and talking about like, if I touch this, I could get sick from it. I'm going to have to go wash my hands now. Anyway, arsenic and wallpaper. 
just thought that was interesting. I knew it was always in gowns and things like that, but very interesting topic. I'm very excited. Okay, so this next one is from... How? Okay, it is. It's from Burnley and Trowbridge. This is my first time ever purchasing from them. I hear people talk about them all the time. I purchased two things from them. I'm using my handy dandy seam ripper to open my package because yes. Ooh, I'm so, I'm already here for this. I'm already here for this y'all. Okay. So I got, this is for the back of the, the waistcoat. I told you guys that I was going to get some linen string for it to tie it. I know they had little metal toppings, but I felt like that would be too extra for this. So I didn't get them. I'm just gonna tie this off, but I'm pretty excited. This is really cute. And then I've heard people talk about that they're synthetic whalebone. Now I've purchased synthetic whalebone from a different company, but I wanted to try this. So this will be for my stays, pretty jazzed. It, it feels, the only difference that I think I feel in this from the other kind is there's a little bit of like ribs or like if you can see like which doesn't bother me at all like that's not bad or good but it definitely feels slightly different than the kind that I'm used to so I'm excited to try that trying new things woohoo so this is a swatch it is one swatch I I like Probably should have bought 10 because this was $9 to ship. But I also was like, I have no need for any other fabric and it would just be such a waste to purchase more swatches. What if the price on it goes up? Oh my goodness, okay. Hmm. So, it's almost good that I don't love it. I don't like this navy blue strip. I thought it was black in two different versions of green. Although this looks really good together. That's kind of a bummer. Well, we have all of our green options. <laughs> and I still can order the cotton sateen from Spoonflower that is the print I'm going for. I was, I had such high hopes to be honest for this. I, I really did have like, I don't know if I like this blue. Let me think on it. I'll think on it. Let me know your opinion in the comments, what you think about this fabric, what you think this fabric is for. Um, costume wise those of you that have known me for a while will know instantly probably knew from the green to be honest that what I have up my sleeve but um just let me know what you think of this all right I feel like I have to start this part of my video off by saying by discussing the elephant in the room which is this band-aid on my thumb I have a band-aid on my thumb if you didn't see it so last night I was toasting my fennel and zesting my lemon and I thought, you know, maybe, maybe I should add some human flesh to this dish. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Is that too morbid? Let me know if that's too morbid. Uh, I was cooking dinner and I was grating a lemon and not, I was reading the instructions while I was grating the lemon, which is not a good idea. I don't recommend like grading a anything and reading instructions. Just don't do it, okay? Cool, lesson learned. So that's that's how I, I like scraped my thumb. There was, uh, there was blood and uh, I had to put a Band-Aid on with some triple antibiotic. That's the story. It is not as cool as I walked into a bar and had a bar fight with a bear, but you know, this bear just came out of nowhere and I just couldn't help myself. I had to tackle it up. I'm just kidding. That's like, that's just, that's a cooler story than I was cooking dinner. <laughs> okay. 
I should explain a little bit what I'm doing. Uh, it, I will do the best to explain and to show and to keep looking back and making sure that I am on camera and you know, those kinds of things. So the first thing that I did was I nested my knot right behind the trim uh, into my silk taffeta down here. Then I basically went into the silk taffeta just a little bit, like you see me doing with my needle here. I'm not gonna actually push it all the way through, but pretend I pushed that all the way through. So I brought it all the way through and then I brought it up here through the net of the trim. Now what I'm attempting to do is go into the trim and into this red silk taffeta about like a half an inch, somewhere between a quarter and a half of an inch without coming through on this side. I would prefer not to have thread on this side, mostly because having thread back there can really cause problems with cleanliness, in my opinion, of the garment. I am I mean, I didn't like go and examine 1740s waistcoats to see how they attached their, their trim, and they could have just gone straight down and straight in. I'm probably making way more work for myself than necessary, but here I am. Uh, and then once I come up on this side, on the top side, the side that you can see, I'm gonna try to get pretty close, maybe like a millimeter or two away from where I just came up to the top. And then again, between the two layers, half an inch probably. And there we go. So again, about a millimeter away from the point I just came out of, trying to stay in between the silk taffeta and the linen. And let's be really honest with ourselves and, and, with, and with you, the internet. If I get lazy, or if, I, if I'm like really struggling and this is just a lot for me to do, because basically I'm gonna try to do it on both sides, right? All the way around. Um, if this becomes a lot, I will sew through the back. I probably should just like reserve myself that notion that I'm gonna do it. And then when I do it, it won't be so uh, blasphemous because I also have to think about how I'm gonna put my sequins on. And if my sequins are gonna go onto the back. I already know where I want my sequins to go. And now looking at this, I want them to go in here and here and there. Maybe like fill in that way. And I did choose a thread that matches my trim and my fabric versus one that matches my lining because obviously it doesn't matter like if I accidentally peek through. Let's let's just look at the back if I've, I haven't done it yet. I mean, these are my buttons if you, if you can't tell. Those are my buttons. But look, I haven't done it yet. Awesome, we're a few inches in. But like if it comes through on the side and there is red, NBD in my opinion. Wow, I started this button way off. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, and I, my goal is to stick to the outer side of this, the trim. So I'll go all the way down, down the skirt, which is off camera, like down this area, on just this inner side. And then right when we get to this point here, I will flip around and come back. And when we get to this right here, this is really, really bulky and crazy and I haven't figured out the best way to do it, but we might spend a little bit of time on this and I can get that on video as well as the turnaround on video. Fingers crossed if I remember. This is kind of my favorite part of costuming, to be honest, is, is the handwork or the like embellishment part. Um, I really, really enjoy embellishments. I really enjoy the the creativity behind them. Like I am 100% aware that these beads and this trim is not a historically accurate trim. That's not what I'm going for though. That's just not to me a, a thing. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter, I guess, in my opinion. If I was trying to like replicate something, totally would be all about making sure to do it, like do 
certain things accurate, but I just, this is my favorite part. And there is no reason for me as a human being to decide to leave out my favorite part of any costume, like of, like to leave this part out. Oh, where's my thimble? There it is. I should have been wearing this. Please don't judge me. <laughs> I say it as I'm literally like stabbing my finger, like, ow, this hurts. Anyway, yeah, so. I'm not gonna like leave out my favorite part of costuming to for accuracy. That just, I don't know, that doesn't make sense to me. So that's that's just it. That's my, my point. Um, once I had somebody on the internet uh, ask, I think, so I was dying polyester lace to add to a dress, right? This was like two to three years ago. No, it was like four years ago. I was dyeing this white polyester ruffly lace blue to go with a blue ensemble. And honestly, if I can find the picture of the ensemble, I will, I'll just like post it here. And I had somebody tell me, well, that's not very historically accurate now, is it? like super sassy and I was like damn I'm like get off my back about this like I'm just having fun I'm that was my first time dying anything either mind you like I dying fabrics and textiles is not something I'm used to so I'm over here super proud that I got like you know all these really pretty shades of blue with my trim and they're like on their high horse <laughs> Now that's not very historically accurate, is it? I think my response was, well, my moire is a polyester moire, so I don't see why any of that matters. Or something dumb. I like, I just was so annoyed. And like, my favorite is when people comment, but like, they're not, this person makes things also. Like they, they are a, a histor, like a, they are a historian. They are known in the community, which is the saddest part, but, oh, man, since that day, I have fully embraced my love for fabric and materials that spark joy and, and excitement in me, and I have said nay, nay to those that are like, you can't use historical fashion or historical costuming hashtags if you don't want us to come to your page and tell you like what you're doing wrong. <laughs> what voice was that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> what voice was that? Anyway.
Hello! Happy Sunday. So today I'm going to be working on the sequins going on the trim that we sewed yesterday. Well, two days ago. Yesterday, I actually worked on the sequins a little bit downstairs. I ran 14 miles yesterday for my training for my half marathon, and I really needed to kind of relax. So I did a good chunk downstairs, and now I'm going to kind of show you how I think about adding embellishments and how I'm adding my sequins. Um, and that is today's plan. And if I can get all of the sequins added onto my um, waistcoat today, tomorrow, I will start working on getting the pattern stuff together and uh, getting it like kind of digitized and figuring all that stuff out and do a fitting tomorrow as well. I will not be getting to a mock-up this week just because I haven't really, I don't have the, like I don't have the time to, to get to it. So that'll be in next week's video, which is totally fine because the mock-up is probably gonna need its own video anyway, since I've never made a writing habit before and there's gonna be a lot of things that I'm gonna have to learn. So, awesome. Let's get to hand sequining. Jazz hands. All right, so here are some of the sequins that I've already placed. Um, there's beads on this trim already. Those were actually on the trim. I didn't do any of that, but like these sequins, um, I've been a little sporadic, like I said, because Ideally, I would like to put sequins like on this and this, but because I have it hanging off um, purposefully to, to be away from the, uh, the eyelets, not the eyelets, the buttonholes, um, I am refraining from doing some of these. Like I skipped this one because it's so close to the edge, but I will show you what I'm doing. I guess I could start with just showing you the two colors that I, I'm, I am using. I will, if I can find the link to the shop, I will link it down below. Um, so this is a dark cherry five millimeter slightly cupped uh, hologram and these darker ones are actually going inside the trim. So anytime I sew in one of these swirls or on a leaf, the darker one is going to go. And then the lighter one is going to go actually on top of the fabric. So right here or right here. And I know it doesn't look that different but to me it is. <laughs> this is called dark red and it is a five millimeter slightly cupped metallic. I did purchase all of these too. Um, they just, they ha uh, first I should say I purchased these on Black Friday. So they were I think 50% off or something like that, 50% off in free shipping. Um, and so that kind of allowed me to just except the fact that I'm gonna buy a lot of different colors. I like this, but I really wanted something sparkly, so this might get used at some point in this costume. And I like these as well, uh, color-wise, and they are very sparkly, and I'm, I'm, I didn't buy nearly as many of these. You can kinda of see. If I, I didn't buy nearly as many as these as I did of um, the others, so I think I'm gonna save this for the outer coat, because I really, like, look at that. You can, like, <laughs> You can't fake that shine. So, um, yeah, but I do have all these other reds that are just not right, like the right shade. And again, this is kind of more of an investment in my business when I think about it that way. Uh, I'll link the, the one, uh, like I'll link the website below. And then if anyone wants the specific exact colors that I got, I will link those below or I'll like send you the link. You can just DM me or comment. And then for this trim, I don't know if I said it or not, but I bought this on Etsy from Mary Not Martha. We'll link the trim in the description below as well. So when I attach uh, any kind of like beads or sequins, I prefer to have it um, like double threaded like this versus last, uh, the other day when I was sewing the trim on, I had it single threaded so my knot ties both sides together and this is just um, because 
sequins and beads and stuff can get pulled at, which is why you also want to either have pre-wax thread like what I'm using or buy wax to wax your thread. But most people that do a lot of historical costuming or most people that do a lot of hand sewing in general already know that. But I just wanted to make sure that I'm being very like meticulous about that I do two strands instead of one. Okay, so I'm gonna start right here. Um, and to nest my knot, I'm gonna pull in, so basically I'll show you on the side real quick. Just like we did before, I'm gonna kinda go like that into my taffeta, but I'm going to do it underneath this leaf here. I can't show that to you because I can't like lift that trim up, but just trust me, take my word for it. So we're gonna just go in and we're gonna try to come out where we want the center of our um, sequin to go. And once again, yep, there it is. Something to keep in mind too is uh, being patient with this kind of stuff, mostly because there are uh, like a lot of beads and things placed and your thread is gonna wanna get snagged on that. So I am, you know, being very cautious of that. So I just put my sequin down, I threaded it through my needle, and now I'm gonna do two steps, and this is actually where I go through the entire fabric, um, mostly because I'm at that point with this, where this is thinner, this bottom piece, because it's just two pieces of taffeta, versus this, which is uh, the linen, and it's just easier to go through it. And I'm only sewing on the back about a couple millimeters, right? Like two and a half millimeters. So going straight through to the other side of the fabric and then coming back up through my sequin hole. So I went up on that one, or I went kind of in this angle. Now I'm gonna come back up through the sequin hole and go to the other side. And this will help secure it in place. Something that with any kind of sequin that's larger than probably four millimeters, maybe even larger than three millimeters. If you don't do it on both sides, you can flip it up. And then like if it flips on its back, I think that looks really ugly personally. And so I try not to do that.
right, well, there it is. Here is the finished waistcoat. I am so happy with it. I have some fit issues, but I am still learning, and I think that over time I'll get a little bit better at fitting and knowing exactly where things should fit and like that kind of stuff. So I'm okay with it. I feel confident in it. I don't feel like frumpy or any of the things that I thought I was gonna feel. I actually feel really cute and it feels great <laughs> especially with the sparkle like i know this isn't historically accurate but that's like okay i just really really enjoy adding sparkle and prettiness to garments and i loved doing it for this i am going to end the construction and stuff here i had every intention to start pulling up the pattern and getting it kind of laid out and then starting a mock-up, but I'm really nervous that the flow of this video would be really weird if I were to be like, look at this finished thing, now let's move on to the next thing. Um, so I'm just going to kind of leave it at this. Let's end on a high note before we start something and I struggle bust through it. So next week I will have the taking the, like starting the pattern part, basically using the Patterns of Fashions book to pattern the waistcoat. No, this is the waistcoat, the jacket, sorry. So I'll be starting on that and hopefully I'll get started on a mock-up, if not one mock-up done. I'm not super confident that I can get a really good mock-up completed in that first like week of doing this because I do still have to kind of refine the pattern to fit my size. And, um, that's gonna be like a day or two process, then a mock-up will happen, and then I can go from there. So either way, I'm really loving how much I've gotten done so far. I hope you all are liking this process. I apologize I didn't have more hand sewing footage. My battery in my camera died while filming, which deleted the video that like it was filming on, and I have never had this happen before, but all three of my batteries were dead at the same time. Normally I'll have two batteries dead and like they'll be charging and then the third one will like be the one. And I guess that one was like almost dead when I put it into my camera. Anyway, I didn't get as much footage as I wanted. I did however get a really great like hangout cuddle session with Eva watching RuPaul's Drag Race while hand sewing this. And it was kind of the recharge I needed. I've been pretty sluggish lately if you haven't been able to tell, like my energy has been a little bit lower, but it was like so relaxing and like fun. And I just love how it turned out. Like I'm, I'm just really happy with it. Thank you all so much for watching this week's vlog. If you like my content, please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, comment below, tell me what you're working on. And if you would like to help fund some of my future projects, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Casey Renee Cosplay. Thank you all again just so much. I really loved working on this and I'm excited to start the next most challenging part, which is the writing habit. So I will see you next Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Happy sewing! I really like my hair today. I went all out, y'all. I curled it. I'm trying this new, like, no eyeliner look, but I am wearing a lot of makeup. So, I have Janet Arnold's Planets, Planets. <laughs> so, I have Janet Arnold's, pa 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 why can't I say patterns? Okay.